Hello and welcome to another tutorial of System Verilog in 5 minutes. Today we'll discuss about variable size to arrays. First, let's talk about use case and reason to use variable size to array. Imagine you have a design, let's say it's an LED display. You can send number to the design and it displays a number on the LED. You can display up to 4 numbers. If you have more than one number to display, you need to send the numbers one by one sequentially. You can model this behavior in the test. You need an array for the display data, and you need a counter to indicate how many data you want to display. And finally, you need an execution for loop to send the data. For example, if you want to print 1, 2, 3, the array would hold 1, 2, and 3. The counter would be 3, meaning 3 digits. There is only one problem with this code, that is the size of the array. The size is set to the maximum, in this example it is 4. That's because you can send a maximum of 4 digits to the design. Let's say you want to send only 1 digit. The size of the array is still 4, meaning 3 of the elements are unused at that time. In general, this is consuming or wasting memory. Variable sized array can resolve this problem. In system Verilog, there are 3 variable sized arrays. Dynamic array, Q and associative array. All of these are non-synthesizable, they are only used in test bench. Now let's dig a little deeper into each type of array. For dynamic array, you use square bracket to declare it. When you declare the array, there is no element yet. Elements are created by calling new with a square bracket. The number in the bracket indicates the size. In this example, two elements are created. After that, you can modify the elements one by one. For example, writing 12 to element 0 and 34 to element 1. You can call new over and over again to create a brand new element. In general, the old ones would be lost. If you wish to create new elements and copy the old ones over, you can do it like this. If you wish to clear all elements, you can call the delete function. Q is declared by using square bracket and a dollar symbol. Just as before, there is no element at point of declaration. Q does not use new function to create elements. It has a lot of other functions to add in or to remove them. For example, it has a pushback function which allows you to put element into the queue. First element would be put at index 0, second element would be put at index 1, and so on and so forth. There is also a push front function. It is similar to pushback except that it goes in an opposite direction. And it changes the index of previously existing elements. There are functions to remove elements as well. For example, there is a pop front function and there is a pop back function. You can also insert elements at the middle of the array by calling insert function. You specify at which index you want to insert the new element. Similarly, you can delete element at any index by calling the delete function and by providing the index. Associative array is declared by using square bracket and a star symbol. It creates elements per index. It is more similar to a map than it is an array. For example, you can start by creating an element at index 10. You can create another one at index 100 and another one at index 1000. Note that in this example, there are only 3 elements and not 1000, even though the maximum index is at 1000. You can delete any element by calling delete function and by providing the index. This is the summary of the 3 variable size arrays. Generally, dynamic array is used for data creation and Q is used for data sequencing management, and associative array is used for modeling memory. There are pros and cons with each of them. For example, creating a huge dynamic array at once is processor-heavy and may slow down simulation. Each of the arrays has its own specific functions. However, they also have some shared functions in general. In this example, there is a queue with 6 values, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3. Calling the size function will return 6, meaning 6 elements. Calling the sum function will return 14, which is adding all the elements together. The mean function will return a queue with only one value, 1. That value 1 is the minimum value in the array. Similarly, you can call max function, which returns a queue with only one value, 3. There is also a function called unique. It will return a queue with 3 values, 1, 2, and 3. Basically, it removes the repeated values. There are many other functions, please read up the ERM to find out more. In summary, variable sized array has the same advantage as a fixed size array. On top of that, it may achieve memory optimization and may speed up test runtime. In the next tutorial, we'll look into functions and tasks.